James Stewart is a painter who trained at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. In the fall of 2021, I made a movie about his show based on poet Ilya Kaminsky's Deaf Republic. In January of 2022, I made a movie about his monumental painting of the January 6th insurrection. His new show is called Place Setting and features a group of friends arrayed around a table at night. Jim, can you tell me a little bit about this new body of work? This group was very influenced by George Delator and just wanting to depict some figures, some hand movements, some folds in cloth. I don't know if it's going to lead to something similar or away from it, but even though it's been a couple of years, it still feels a bit new in where it might go from here. Who are the characters? Are they guests from dinner parties you attended? Uh, Yes. My wife would host some dinner parties and we'd light the candles and I would get information that way. Paintings before this, I was more making up the characters and the facial expressions. And I just wanted to be more specific. They really are quite realistically painted. But you have a few landscapes in the show with figures that you said were totally made up. And the characters in your January 6th painting seem more expressionistic than realistic. How do you choose a manner of representation for any given painting? Because these were coming after the January 6th piece, which I had really caricatured so many different individuals, I was enjoying doing the tighter depictions, but that is very much the question that I'm going to be wrestling with going from here. Either caricature or becoming even more specific. There's painters that I really love that do both. I have the sense that your work is more informed by other artists and writers than it is by everyday reality. That is very much the case. I never see a sunset that I'd like to paint. I see a painting of a sunset that I would like to attempt. It's not that I don't appreciate the actual sunset. It's that it just doesn't cry out to me that it needs to be painted. But when I see a painting of one, it opens a door for me. And that has always been the case. The first painting I ever attempted, 11 years old maybe, was a copy of a Rembrandt portrait. And yet your paintings are so different from whatever source material you may have used. That is almost always because my precedent is beyond me. And I'm attempting as best as I can, but they're giants. Be that as it may, I sure can recognize a James Stewart painting. I don't think about the work being mine in some fashion. It's almost like that's the burden that we all have to live with, that People tell me that they see something individual of my own there, and uh, I don't think we can escape it. It looks like there's some card games going on in these paintings. What made you want to paint that theme? I made copies of three different Delators. Why was it that I wanted to look at them without knowing who the people were? And I was running into that problem with depicting my friends. And so I ended up turning most of them then into card games because with the history of this style of painting coming through Caravaggio, he would use a card game. And then most of the Utrecht painters that followed him would use a card game. And I found it just shifted the emphasis a little bit and made it more theatrical. The old masters often depicted a young rich guy about to be fleeced in a card game by cheaters. Are any of your friends capable of that kind of poor behavior? Look a little bit closer because in each one, there's one character with a card up her sleeve or his sleeve. Yeah. Which is part of the theatricalness of them and the playfulness of Cadellator. Do you often cheat at cards? Yeah, in every painting that I'm painted in, I cheat at cards. (laughs) 
Did you win that time? Uh, no, no. I, even when I cheat, I lose. <laughs> There's quite a bit of drinking going on. And is that whiskey? Yes, it is whiskey. Normally, you think of poker games and whiskey as being a male dominion, but most of your characters are women. Are these hard guzzling women? They'd love that question. Maybe a couple in the group would taste it with us. I think that at the time, there was a few of us that were just enjoying tasting some. Uh, hard guzzling is beyond us. <laughs> I think your use of color is very effective in these. I do not consider myself a colorist. I wish I was. I fly by the seat of my pants with that. If it looks muddy or if I want your eye to go to a certain place, I'll intensify the color. But I don't have a lot more of a theory to it than that. I do see the difference, though, between myself and somebody that I would consider a real colorist. What's it like to get an idea and then do a whole series based on that idea? Because many of the paintings are similar, but there are so many wonderful, rich variations between them. I don't know whether I was taught to think that way or it came natural to think that way, but I find that if I have a unique painting going well, I immediately want to turn and start another one so that I have more time thinking about why do I think it's going well. Then if there's another one going alongside of it, maybe it can benefit from the last, and then by that it ends up turning into a series. You are a heck of a good still life painter. I appreciate that. What I was attempting is could I make the things on the table attract the eye as much or more than the faces? Because a face we naturally want to go to so quickly. And so, especially as the group went on, I was trying to compete with that by making the table setting eye-catching. The women's eyeglasses attract my eye. Was it fun painting those? It was, and I thought also that I could use it to deflect the want to immediately go to their eyes. It was a little bit of a barrier that could be either playful or compete with a crystal glass that's sitting on the table. Now that you mention those beautiful crystal glasses, I stopped drinking a year ago in January, and I miss it a little bit, but not too badly. But when I see those whiskey glasses... Do you feel any guilt for revving me up? Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thank you, John. It's been a treat. James Stewart's exhibition, Place Setting, will be on display at Gross McLeaf Gallery through March 30th, 2024. And also make sure you ask to see his January 6th painting. I firmly believe that its power and importance are destined to grow as years go by. <laughs>